Morning Wake Up, 1320 WILS. Morning Wake Up with Dave Ackerley, yours truly. Of course, uh, 1320WILS.com, the website, podcast, tune in app, everything is there. And frequently, we get a chance to talk to a political strategist and author of uh, Ladies Can We Talk, Debbie Georgiatos, who uh, joins us to talk politics, who's here right now. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, Iowa. Thank you for being here. Iowa caucuses coming up in just a few weeks now, and then one week, actually eight days later, got to be exact, the New Hampshire primary. So these are the two biggies to get out. It's finally we're, we're getting past what we call the yakking season, and now that we're actually talking, there's going to be something happening in terms of people getting together and making their decision on the next president. What are you seeing out there on the GOP side? What What has got you interested in Iowa, where Ted Cruz has just wrapped up his, his bus tour, and Donald Trump is actually spending money, and lots of it, for the first time in this campaign. Yes, he is. Donald Trump has a very strong, his new his first ad of the new year, and it's a very strong ad, just not anti-anybody else, but just saying he means it about uh, the securing the border and ending Islamic immigration, and he's a, you know, he, it's a, t- a talking tough ad. It's an interesting contrast because Ted Cruz has a new ad out, too, which is a more positive um, and scaled-down message. And so it's, they actually represent the campaigns really well. But the big thing I think in Iowa is good to watch you know, really over the next four weeks is can Ben Carson turn his campaign around? He has worked very hard to say in this new year, my campaign staff has changed out, I'm a new person, I'm going to be a strong guy, mm-hmm. and he's got a lot to overcome to convince people he has that presence, that fire in the belly for this job as president and to defend America. You know, he makes a good point, Debbie, when he says you don't have to be loud to be a good president. I think that's true, but it sometimes he is so, uh, you know, the, the <laughs> Trump has taken it to Jeb Bush in this campaign for being a low-energy guy. You've heard that over and over, but at times it really sounds like Dr. Carson is so low-key that it's almost no-key. Even where he's making sense, he's very, very under the radar with the way he, he has to, he just has to have a little more, as you say, presence, right? I think that's true. And the other thing that has plagued his campaign, there was a story, a big New York Times story in a different Washington Post, one saying from his own campaign staff saying he needed to learn, uh, get brushed up more in foreign policy, had to learn foreign policy more, and Another one talking about his campaign being in disarray. And it's, it's just having people from inside your campaign paint your candidate as not ready in foreign policy, especially in today's world, it's, it's pretty deadly stuff. It's pretty hard. And so he's going to, you know, he, you can be a soft-spoken person, but you have to be in command of the issues and the dangers America faces. And you really have to have that. Uh, maybe you don't want to be loud. You don't have to be Donald Trump brash. But you have to be strong and, compa- and and convey that strength. I see that in Ted Cruz. I don't see it in, Don- in, in Ben Carson, at least yet. You made the uh, comparison earlier about the positive ad versus, you know, uh, tearing down others. And we've seen that historically, especially over the last 50 years, television ads uh, and then, of course, radio. What, the, what You know, what works in your mind, your political strategist, the negative, the positive, or is it a mixture of both? What works best? It has to be a mixture. I do think that... If, you, if you're a candidate and you take it seriously and you can see the shortcomings of your opponents, you have to get that message out there because your opponent's never going to do that. Somehow your campaign, without appearing to be personal and harsh, has to point out the shortcomings of the others. And in particular in this campaign, because in so many interviews and answers and debates, Donald Trump gives the, well, I'm a tough guy, look where I am in the ratings, and the answer to almost everything, it's going to be incumbent on the other people in the, on that debate stage to say, what was the answer to the question about X? I mean, this is, there's a need to point that out. And, the, you know, if the media points it out, but I think the other candidates have to start to say, I've given a solid answer. My answer is X. I didn't really hear an answer over there. I think they need to start doing that. You think of a primary race, especially with the GOP, or it's kind of like a horse race. And one analyst told me it's kind of like coming around the eight pole, Frequently, it's not the first or second place. That horse coming off the pace just a bit, the third horse who makes it suddenly a sprint and takes the two others by surprise. You see that all the time. Could that happen here? Could it happen with somebody like a Marco Rubio suddenly take wind, or is it starting to look like that's less likely? What's your, what's your take on that? I think in Iowa, as the very first caucus, I think Marco Rubio could have a home run moment, really help himself. 
I think actually Carly Fiorina could. I know that mm, people are not even really talking about her anymore, but she's fabulous in debates, and, and she may just do that. But And the Iowa caucus winner doesn't always win the, in fact, there are recent examples, doesn't win the election, uh, doesn't win the nomination. So, you know, Iowa caucus is really just a first step toward finding what That's the voters right. are really thinking. All right. Debbie Georgiatis is political strategist, author of Ladies, Can We Talk? And we always, it's ladies, well, it can be guys like me. Can we talk? We do on a regular basis with Debbie. We appreciate you being here. As always, have a great day. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Debbie. More coming up, Morning Wake Up. But uh, she has an interesting take on that. And, of course, you know, where do we go from here? It is number one out of the blocks. But, uh, again, just with a few weeks to go to Iowa, it is, it, it, it's finally to where things, it may only be number one, but things do count coming out of those caucuses as opposed to just the polling. 1320, this is WILS.